What's up? Today I'm going to be going over my number one overall career tip that has helped me throughout my civil structural engineering career. I've learned this advice from talking to different structural civil engineering CEOs, project managers, and leaders in the industry. And this has helped me get where to I am today, uh, going through as a project engineer all the way up to a structural project manager. Okay, you ready for it? For your first five years in the civil structural engineering industry, get as good as you can technically while finding opportunities to improve your soft skills. In a nutshell, the way I envision this is your technical skills as an engineer are your foundation, but if you really wanna get far into the industry and be able to provide more value and be a really good engineer, the soft skills are what's going to be making the superstructure or the skyscraper or the tower or the building. That's how you can really elevate your career. Technical skills can only get you so far, but they are fundamental in your career. As a civil engineer, specifically structural engineering, you need to be good at your job. You need to be good at the technical aspects. And if you're fresh, there's gonna be so much to learn. So as much as you can, learn to get good with the software programs, learn to get good with the codes, the, desi the design philosophies, the code intents, the behavior of structures, what makes a good design, what makes an efficient design, how things are constructed, how to make a good set of drawings, how to make a good calculation package, all those things you need to get good at and try to be the best that you can at those. Go to seminars, go, go read articles, go over your textbooks. All these things are very important. These are the fundamentals of what makes a good engineer. And you'll have plenty of time if you're working 40 hours a week to learn it. So you're gonna be learning it anyways. So make sure to get good at it. And like I said, this is the foundation of your career. They won't take you very high in terms of your career path, but you need to know them. So how come, how come technical skills can only get you so far? Well, nowadays in the civil structural engineering industry, I'm sure you know, there's software that can do the technical aspects of your job a lot more efficiently than you doing it by hand calcs. In my opinion, software won't completely replace the structural engineer, but it will probably make it so you don't need five engineers, maybe because of the improvements in software, you only need uh, two or three. So you can't rely solely on your technical skills because a part of that, a computer, can make up for that. What a computer can't replace and that's essential to every structural civil engineering business are the soft skills, the communication skills, you can call them uh, business skills, communication skills, people skills. Some of the smartest, some of the best uh, structural civil engineers that I've had a chance to talk to, not only were they great technically, but they were also great communicators. If you wanna check them out, I'm a host on the Structural Engineering Channel podcast in the link below where I go over technical topics with some of the structural engineering experts in the field. And yes, there are exceptions to everything. I'm sure there's some position out there somewhere where it's really niche and really technical and you have some guy isolated in their room that doesn't talk to anybody and just works on the algorithm or whatnot and doesn't communicate with anybody. I'm sure that exists, but that is probably pretty rare. So why are these soft skills so important? In that skyscraper reference, why is it your technical skills are the foundation and they can only take you so high? And why are the soft skills the main building, the skyscraper of your career that can take your career trajectory on a whole nother level? One reason for that is software can't replace it. It's not easily replaceable. It's a skill that only humans can do. Another reason is that engineers tend to often neglect this in their studies. It's rare that engineers take public speaking class, communication class. Most of us are introverts and think uh, you're not good at that. What I learned throughout my career is even if you are an introvert like I am, it's just a skill. If you, get, if you practice it, you change your mindset about it, you can get better at it. It's just like learning to drive a car. No one is born knowing how to drive a car, but if you practice, you can at least be proficient enough to be on the road. You may be a bad driver, but you can still get around. You can still be good enough to drive. What I often see is engineers not even wanting to try to improve these skills and it hurts them in, the, in their career. I'll tell you why. It essentially comes down to civil engineering being a business, at least in the US. And business is essentially people. People, if they like working with you, will give you civil engineering projects. If you don't have a project to work on, you can't do your civil structural engineering. And with that project, you're gonna need help, you're gonna need a team. If you don't know how to lead that team, if you don't know how to manage and communicate with that team, 
that project's gonna fail. The client's gonna be mad at you because you didn't do a good job because you couldn't handle, handle your team. Your team's gonna leave because you're not treating them well and you're out of business or you're fired. But Matt, I became an engineer to just do the calculations. I don't wanna deal with people. I just wanna get good at math and that's it. I just wanna to stick to the technical stuff and be a technical lead. And that's fine if you wanna be the technical expert, you wanna be the technical lead, you still know how to need to know how to lead. It's in the job title, technical lead. So if you eventually wanna rise up the ranks, you can't get away from not being at least somewhat proficient in working with people and building up those soft skills. And as a reminder, you don't need to go crazy on these skills. Just take opportunities whenever you can to at least build them, even if it's just a little bit here and there. So when you're ready to be promoted, you already have those skills built in to lead a team or go into project management. What are some practical ways to do this, for example? One of the easiest ways to do this is to just speak up during meetings, get used to speaking up, giving your opinion. It'll get you used to talking in front of a group of people, even if it is just your colleagues. You could volunteer to do and present at a lunch and learn at your firm. You're getting really good at your technical stuff. I'm sure you're learning a lot of the new codes that some of the older engineers might not be familiar with you can volunteer to give a short presentation and speak in front of everybody. You could also join and volunteer for professional organizations such as ASCE or NCSEA or CIOSC. Take on a leadership role such as the secretary, uh, president, treasurer, or even just being on the board to help coordinate and plan events. Those are low stake ways to help build your management skills, to help build your people skills that you may not directly get in your project engineer position. You could also take formal public speaking classes or such as uh, joining Toastmasters. You can read books on your off time or read uh, or listen to audiobooks. Some of my favorite leadership books are Extreme Ownership by Willink and Babin and Super Connector by Gerber. I'll link those books in the description below. And all these soft skills you're going to need at those higher up leadership positions. The best way to get promoted is to already have those skills. So knowing the importance of them and slowly developing them early on in your career, it'll make it that much easier to get promoted to those positions. Thanks for watching this far. If you want to support the channel for free, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It tells the YouTube algorithm to show this video to more civil structural engineers and students so it can help them in their careers and lives as well. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.